Okay, this video is called Internist Conversation Number Three. I recently had a conversation with an internal medicine doctor that was rather interesting. Um, you know, out of all the fields in medicine, I think in general the internal medicine textbooks are just about the worst. They're not as bad as psychiatry, though. Okay, so anyways, so the internist he says to me, he says, you know, Pete. I think you're right about all this nutrition and toxicology stuff. For many years, I've known these pills were poisons, but we didn't have much else to offer. He says, your work that I found most helpful was the stuff you wrote about high-fat diets and excess sodium, um, as well as, you know, in conjunction with the lack of dietary magnesium and potassium, how this was causing high blood pressure and, um, you know, insulin resistance for diabetes and coronary artery disease. He says, that was really helpful to me and I've, I found that helpful for my patients. Um, also the stuff you wrote about leaky gut and all the things a person could do to release leaky gut and with regard to that to, you know, the clotting problems, amyloidogenic clotting. I thought that was interesting and helpful. And then he said, I also liked the stuff about the brain excitotoxins. You made sense out of dementia. Before all we had was this Alzheimer's BS and you don't know what to do with that. Um, he says, you know, your exocytotoxin stuff, all the roads leading to calcium, I can make sense out of that. I can offer useful advice. And all that stuff about the mitochondria inhibitors, he said, it was like sad when I saw that video, but at the same time it was funny. I'm like, crap, we prescribe mitochondria inhibitor drugs all the time. Metformin, statins, SSRIs, antibiotics. And people eat that stuff all the time. The atrazine, the soy, the high fructose corn syrup, glyphosate, all these mitochondria inhibitors. You know, it's not a big surprise. All these people are sick and they're cognitively slow. He says, oh man, oh, so many of these patients are so cognitively slow. It's sad and pathetic. And he says, and then they're drinking water with aluminum and fluoride in it all the time routinely. He says, it's a disaster. I mean, the amount of people cognitively impaired is so much worse than what is widely recognized. And, you know, he continued, you know, he was kind of in a good mood. It was nice of him to talk to me at all about this stuff. He says, I'm glad I learned all this stuff from you, but it's hard to get people to do it. He says, I can't even get, you know, most of my doctor friends and nurses to follow the vegan diet. And he also said, on the one hand, I feel like teaching this stuff, but I'm real busy. I don't have a lot of time. And it's also a little weird talking about this stuff because one has to contradict so much of the stuff they previously learned already, you know, with conventional medicine, conventional, you know, medical training. And sometimes I'm almost hesitant to do it. I'm almost scared that people will be offended because uh, it's so different from what they're used to. And then he's kind of like trying to needle me a little. He says, and by the way, I think my friend is smarter than you. He has this friend who's a real smart guy. And I said, your friend is maybe smarter than me. He understands faster than I do. He's got a higher IQ than me. But uh, I got more intellectual curiosity than him. That's why I know so much more than him. So that's kind of a little joke. But here, here's a diagram. I could have magnified it, but I wanted to keep it on the same slide. And this is what I was telling him, a sort of a different way of perceiving disease. So this is the typical way a conventional doctor perceives disease. I got D1 through 15. There's really a couple of A and B. So there's probably about, you know, about 18 or 19 diseases here. And these are all real common. You know, gastroesophageal reflux, leaky gut, irritable bowel, constipation, varicose veins. And so a conventional doctor sees these all as distinct different diseases. And there's a pill for gastroesophageal reflux, you know, for leaky gut. You know, they don't even know leaky gut exists in their conventional textbooks. But they got treatments for all the autoimmune diseases, real powerful drugs, you know, for constipation, take some Metamucil. For varicose veins, go to the injection place. For cancer, get your chemo and your surgery. For memory problems, you know, not much we can do. You can try one of this Aricept or some other dementia drug. Arthritis, you know, go to ortho, maybe get the joint replaced. Take some NSAIDs, you know, that sort of thing. Low back pain, you know, we'll inject some steroids. You might end up needing surgery. We'll get an MRI. Gallstones, you know, unless they're real symptomatic, we don't do nothing with those. Um, osteoporosis, we'll send you for bone mineral density scan. Kidney stones, well, we can just screen you with ultrasound for that. Type 2 diabetes, we'll check your, your labs, put you on metformin. <laughs> okay, well, anyways, the reason I'm going through all this is in a medical student's education, these are in residents, you know, internal medicine residents, these are all distinctly different diseases, distinctly different treatments. And they don't know what causes them. Okay, so what I'm saying is, I sometimes it's been called God's way. There's a real famous lady doctor who I learned this from, um, God's way of healing and, and stuff. And there's other things combined with this. Is I would call this a nutrition, epidemiology, toxicology point of view, holistic point of view. Basically, I look at all this stuff, GERD, leaky gut, IBS, constipation, varicose veins. That's all just abdominal pressure syndrome. It's all one disease. It's all the same thing. Dennis Burkett's lack of dietary fiber. Okay, so that's pretty easy to deal with. Autoimmune disease is more of the same. Leaky gut for, you know, the multiple of reasons, most commonly lack of fiber, but the other things related to it. I look at cancer, I think, uh, you know, Warburg theory and um, 
you know, tissue ischemia. So tissue ischemia means it relates to atherosclerosis. Oh, it can also be post-scarring, post-infectious scarring and whatnot, post-foreign body scarring related to that inflammatory reaction subsequently ends up in fibrosis. Uh, but all this stuff, high fat diets, excess sodium, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, coronary artery disease, it's all the same thing. So what that means is once you, the great benefit of knowing it's all the same thing, eat more dietary fiber, you avoid all this stuff, okay? Uh, avoid high fat Diets and excess sodium, get your potassium and magnesium from your plants, your antioxidants. You avoid all this stuff, okay? Kidney stones, you know, avoid eating the meat, for example. All right, you'll avoid that. And the same thing with osteoporosis. They go together, kidney stones and osteoporosis. And the same patients, they almost all of them have fatty liver, which goes with all this stuff. What I'm trying to say is these diseases, they're not at all separate. They're all completely very much related. And the great benefit of that is they're all primarily due to diet and toxins. So you fix your diet and toxins, you can dramatically lower your incidence of these and often slow them down or halt their progression, even potentially reverse, for example, atherosclerosis. Um, arthritis, you know, the best thing you could do is get this diet and toxicology stuff figured out. McDougall wrote a good essay in the past called Diet, the only treatment for arthritis, the only hope for arthritis. It's a good essay, okay? Low back pain is very similar to arthritis, a lot of the issues. And there's also ischemic disc disease. I wrote a whole book on that, you know, ischemic, ischemia is most common cause of spine disease. There's also biochemistry related that you want to avoid F- and GP. Okay, so anyways, when you come from the point of view of understanding this stuff, it's so much easier to make sense out of it and help the patients really improve and potentially cure themselves of some of these diseases. Whereas conventional doctor, all you've got is drugs in your toolkit. There's not much you can do except put them on more and more drugs and they only kind of work so-so, not as well as this diet and toxicology stuff. And the patients just get worse and end up eventually going for surgery or taking more drugs. So anyways, I eh, thought it was a little bit interesting.